in this presentation, I'd like to talk about hypotheses, how to frame them. A hypothesis is a testable comparison. The simplest way to think about it is, it describes dividing units of analysis on the basis of the independent variable, the causal variable, and then comparing values across values of the independent variable on the dependent variable. Here's an example. In a comparison of individuals, that's the unit of analysis, I put, put it in the italics there, those who are Democrats, one value of the independent variable, would be more likely to favor gun control, one value of the dependent variable, than will those who are Republicans. In a comparison of individuals, those who are Democrats will be more likely to favor gun control than those who are Republicans. Now here's a template that will, will never steer you in the wrong direction. If you uh, use this template to frame a hypothesis, you may get awkward syntax, but you'll always get a workable statement that uh, you, can, uh, you can frame and test. In a comparison of whatever, whatever it is you're studying, the units of analysis, those having one value of the independent variable will be more likely to have one value of the dependent variable than those having a different value of the independent variable. So you can see here, as we're moving across values of the independent variable from one value to another, we're proposing that there's going to be a change in one value of the dependent variable. Some examples. In a comparison of countries, units of analysis, those having PR, electoral systems, proportional representation, will be, will be more likely to have higher voter turnout than those having plurality electoral systems. So the two values being compared there, the two values of the independent are uh, electoral system type, PR systems versus plura plurality systems. And the value of the dependent variable that's being cited is higher voter turnout. In a comparison of individuals, those who are women will be more likely to be Democrats than those who are men. Two values of the independent gender, uh, women and men, uh, and uh, varying across one value of the dependent variable, the percentage or the likelihood of being Democrats. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the template may produce uh, some tortured syntax, so it's, it's, it's acceptable to work with what you formally framed and make it more uh, uh, friendly to the ear. Here's a formally correct hypothesis in a comparison of individuals, those who are women will be more likely to be Democrats than those who are men. And of course, you can change that to say, in a comparison of individuals, women are more likely than men to be Democrats. Same essence, same idea. You're comparing uh, across values of the independent, women and men, on one value of the dependent, Democrats. Here's some common mistakes in framing hypotheses. For example, this statement just describes one variable. It doesn't describe any other variables except just the one. In a comparison of individuals, some people are more likely to donate money to political candidates than other people. Well, that's interesting. It's, a, it's just a, a observing a variation. But there's no causal variable. Or if this is the independent variable, there's no dependent variable. If donating money is the dependent, what's the independent? Uh, is it people who make uh, higher incomes are more likely to contribute uh, to candidates? Uh, uh, would that be a, a plausible independent? If donating money is the independent variable, what's the dependent variable? You know, so you can you 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 often will see statements like this, but they're not hypothetical. They're not hypotheses at all. They're just citing one variable. Here's a second mistake: not making an explicit comparison. Highly religious people voted high rates. Well, it, it may be implied that uh, less religious people are voting at low rates, but don't leave it implicit. The key comparison that less religious people vote at low rates is implicit. Make sure you explicitly make the comparison. In a comparison of individuals, those who have high levels of religiosity be more likely to vote than those who have low levels of religiosity. Uh, here's another mistake, not stating direction or tendency. Uh, hy hypotheses, explanations, and therefore the hypotheses that are derived from explanations, uh, have direction. You know, uh, the independent variable causes the dependent variable. Here's a, a defective hypothesis. In a comparison of individuals, gender and abortion attitudes are related. It doesn't say how they're related. It doesn't say if, if uh, men are more likely to uh, 
uh, support abortion rights than, than women, or if women are more likely to support abortion rights than men. How exactly are the two variables related? Are women more likely to be pro-choice than are men? Are men more likely to be pro-choice than women? Always uh, cite and state clearly a direction. Now, here's a, uh, this one really springs from, uh, from poor explanations. When hypotheses are vague, you can usually trace them back to uh, poorly thought through explanations. Uh, this sounds like a conversation starter, though. Because of sociocultural changes associated with the growth in social media, contemporary political conflicts revolve around post-materialist values. Well, that's, that's certainly a mouthful, but uh, uh, you might be hard, any, a person be hard-pressed to figure out what that means. It's just too vague. What, what, what is meant by sociocultural changes? Uh, one might be able to measure what, what is meant by social media. We all have kind of an idea of that. Uh, contemporary political conflicts. What are post-materialist values? So don't be vague. That's the, um, uh, uh, that's the point of this, uh, pointing out this mistake. Um, 